In this video we'll have a look at uh, light lens restoration. If your headlight lenses or tail light lenses or whatever are yellowed from uh, sun exposure or if they're chipped and scratched um, there we can have a look at restoring them. Now these headlight lenses are basically okay but these fog light lenses are badly stone chipped because of their lower position on the car's front. Now the first step is to remove the light assemblies from the car. Uh, you can do them in situ if you want, but it's harder, especially if there's going to be any painting involved. So take them out if you can. And then uh, give them a good clean with a decent quality car wash soap um, to remove all the dirt and grit that could interfere with the process. And then uh, dry them properly so that you have a uh, pure surface to work with. So as I said, these headlight units are not in bad condition, they just have some minor scratches and chips. So I'm just going to basically polish the lens. Um, this is a rubbing compound intended for leveling out paint, and it works really well on uh, polycarbonate plastic. So you apply the compound using a polishing cloth and then get to polishing. Uh, so this will work on yellowed lenses too if they're not too bad, so give it a try. Um, if they are too bad, then you'll need to sand off more material. Uh, but, you know, this can often good, give good results just on its own, just with the uh, compound. So once done polishing, buff it off and wipe it clean and see what the results look like. Now, uh, here's a slightly worse example, and I'm doing uh, that on the car in this case because removing the light assemblies is a pain. So this is feasible, but uh, yeah, if it needed sanding and painting, uh, it would be a bit tricky. Now here's the example that will require sanding and painting. Notice all of this pitting. Uh, some of these are quite deep, and uh, as I play this light over the surface, you can see it quite well. So the only way to fix this is to remove enough material that it's mostly leveled. And to do that, we're going to have to invest some time sanding it down. To do that, you'll need a range of sandpaper intended for wet sanding. I have here uh, 240, 600, 1000, and finally 2000 grit papers. Uh, you'll also want a sanding block with a soft working surface that can handle curved surfaces, etc. Uh, these fog lights are flat, um, but it's still helpful. So soak the paper in water and use some detergent for lubrication on the plastic surface and get to work. Now I'm starting here with 240 grit, but be warned that's pretty rough and it will give you some deep scratches that are gonna require a lot of work with finer grit to get out later. So if you don't have such deep chips as uh, I do here, I suggest you start with 500 or 600 grit or similar. Um, and by the way, I'm sanding in two dimensions at um, 90 degrees from each other. Uh, if you sand in a swirl pattern, it can be harder to hide any of the remaining scratches later on. And another thing I'll say is that if you want to um, sand horizontally, or at least the majority of stages horizontally, uh, if you're doing this on the car, um, so as to give the paint a better surface to grip onto when it's sprayed, so that it's you know, less inclined to then slide off and develop runs. In my case, obviously, I'm not concerned about that. Now, once you're done with the courses grit, then you just switch up to the next finest and repeat. Uh, each stage, you're working on removing the scratches of the former stage, because if you have too many of the deep scratches from the coarser stages left over at the end, then the paint won't fill them, and you'll be left with a poor finish. So I work down here to the 2000 grit, And then this is what the finish looks like in the end after quite a bit of work. Now it's not perfect, but it's good enough for my purposes. And the paint will cover up most of the remaining visible scratches. And you can see some of the original pits remain too, uh, but they've been greatly minimized. And again, the paint should fill most of these. So onto the fun part, which is coating and refinishing. You'll need a uh, quality clear coat acrylic. Now the easy DIY option is an off-the-shelf spray can. This is a Rust-Oleum product, two times ultra cover gloss clear. Now what's good about it in particular is the specific claim to bond to plastic, because you'll want that, uh, because painting plastic is always troublesome. And uh, it also claims to be non-yellowing and UV resistant, so it's uh, clearly designed for outdoor use, which is what we want. Now, preparation is critical for painting success. I always read the instructions carefully and pay attention to your uh, temperature and humidity. 
uh, because trying to paint in high humidity is a common cause of problems, especially with clear coats because they're very sensitive to blooming and clouding that will ruin the finish. And also make sure you follow the instructions with regard to the uh, amount of time to leave between coats and the drying times. So get set up where you want to do the painting and uh, when ready give the lens a clean with um, isopropyl alcohol or something similar to ensure the best bonding surface then get to spraying. Now any of you who are painters will be laughing at the uh, amateur spray can and rightly so. Um, of course if you're into painting and you have the gear then using a proper two-pack clear along with a decent spray gun will of course give a much higher quality result. But you know, if you don't have that gear or let alone the skill, then it's not going to make any financial sense to get your light lenses professionally painted. Um, you'll very quickly pass the threshold where you'd just be better off buying new headlight units. Um, so this is really as far as it's worth going in the interest of getting a half decent solution that's gonna last at least a little while on the cheap. So I did three or four coats. Um, it's always best to do more coats of a thinner nature as opposed to fewer and thicker coats, uh, especially if the lenses are more vertical than this when you're painting them because you risk developing runs if you spray too much at once and then you'll ruin the entire job if you develop even so much as one run and uh, you'll have to take it all off again and start all over. So try to avoid that. And then you'll need to leave it to dry entirely, um, at least 24 hours, depending on the paint, preferably a few days. Um, and then you could just leave it at that point. You, you, that could be it as far as you're concerned. You can already see that this is a pretty good result, especially if you stood back from it a few meters. Um, but you'll probably have some orange peel, as you can see here. So I'm simply going to sand and polish this paint job. I'll do 1,000 and then 2,000 grit. Although in retrospect, the 2000 would probably have been fine on its own because the paint was uh, relatively soft and it was easy to sand. It doesn't require much. Uh, by the way, you can see here some of the deeper pits that remain uh, where the paint hasn't managed to fill them in. Uh, but there's not many of them and I'm happy with this. To finally uh, finish off with the finest grip. And then you get the rubbing compound out and this will be the last stage. So, voila. You can see this is a pretty big improvement to how it was before. And it should last a while on the car. And we have avoided having to spend money on replacing the light units. Okay, have fun.